Hey, hey, math people. Why math? Good question, PowerPoint guy. Uh, today I want to go over the age-old question that is, why do we even bother studying math? So this presentation I give at the beginning of every school year, and you're about to listen up and be enlightened. So why math? I'm going to tell you why. And also, when will we ever need this and how will we ever use this? So let's go. Okay, why math? Uh, as you can see, this image is something mathy, right? As you can see down below. Uh, if you just sort of skimmed past it, you'd be like, ah, yes, those are math things. Moving on. Uh, but really, we're drawing attention to that very notion. If you do, in fact, just kind of skim it and move on, well, it would mean nothing to you. But really, it's drawing attention to the idea that is people do that all the time. Um, if you look at that first panel here, it says fraction of the image is white and fraction of the image is black. What? Well, that's meaningless. Uh, the amount of ink uh, or black ink used by panel, that's meaningless again. All these things are, are meaningless. So um, people oftentimes just skip over the math. So why math? Because math isn't pointless. See chapter one of any geometry textbook. Get it? Because the definition of point is right there in chapter one because points are in geometry. Anyways, because math really, it allows you to, um, to establish fact beyond all possible doubt. That's the beauty behind it. Why math? Let's dig a little bit deeper into that. Uh, well, because the president said so, and you're going to use this every day of your adult life, and I'm the adult, and I'm smarter than you, and you need to listen to me. Grr. Okay, so real answer to come right here. Uh, math is mysterious, but it exists everywhere around us. It is a necessary component to explain the world and to create new things. And these skills that you do ultimately end up gaining in a math classroom, uh, they foster problem solving skills, pattern recognition skills, quantitative reasoning skills. Um, the, the list just goes on. Honestly, you're going to be developing into a more well-rounded person when you, uh, you develop your math skills, when you develop your skills in math. Um, and, and that's what the world's really calling for nowadays, well-rounded people. Math is absolutely everywhere. Um, we see it in uh, naturally occurring nature. It's kind of interesting how humans and, and I guess other, other species are naturally drawn uh, to certain shapes and certain artistic patterns. Um, so, for example, how bees are drawn to a hexagon figure in uh, their beehives and how humans are drawn to this natural symmetry that occurs in the face. You can see the dragonfly has that nice symmetry to it, and same with the snowflake. Um, as you can see in the nautilus shell and the human face, uh, we have all these interesting spirals on them. Ultimately, those are proportions that are created, and we have, we have these distinct proportions that are uh, most pleasing to the human eye, I, I guess. Um, and it's just a fun idea to think about. So in the bottom right image there, uh, thinking about pi and e, how those numbers just naturally reoccur time and time again. The math reoccurs naturally all the time. Um, you just have to keep an eye out for it. Math is everything. So if you are studying the cosmos um, in astronomy, you have to have a strong math background in math for that. Uh, math dates back to a very long time ago, uh, back to the pyramid days. I'm, I'm not a history person, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when that is, um, but of course you can you can use math to find the the volume and surface area of that. Um, math is very applicable in uh, as you can see there's a light spectrum there, there's a DNA there, and there's some chemicals there. Very applicable in biology, physics, and uh, chemistry as well. Uh, and then uh, of course structures and architecture and building we obviously need to make sure those things stand up straight rather than collapse on top of us. Uh, Last image I didn't talk about there is a plane. Uh, of course, you wouldn't jump into a flying metal contraption if the conductor or driver or whatever his name is said, hmm, not sure. Oh, it's aviator, right? I think it's aviator. Uh, not sure if this thing is going to fly, but I sure hope it does. Uh, no, we, we trust that the science and, and ultimately uh, driving back even further, the math, we ensure and trust in the math to... Uh, take us to our proper destination other than, well, not flying and burning and crashing. And lastly, math is for everyone. Uh, so we're just going to suppose that this uh, thinking model girl um, is uh, not entering the realm of STEM, science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics. 
Uh, and she's just an everyday person who's just, I don't know, what is she doing? We can make up anything. Uh, she's a, she's a congresswoman. I don't know. Point is, is she's still using math. She's still using math. Uh, so when she's creating music, she actually has a very strong understanding of uh, fractions. Uh, when she's running on the treadmill, kind of calculating that rate of change, she's really working with a the slope there. Um, she's budgeting her money. She has a strong understanding of number sets. Uh, when she's playing basketball, it's like you're really creating parabolas with that ball that you're shooting into the hoop. Uh, and the same thing goes with um, counting calories in a meal. Like all these things, in general, use math. You use math every day. It's just that you don't attach a certain uh, math learning standard to it like math teachers do. You really um, do use it, whether you know it or not. Part two, when will we ever need this? Um, so um, this is a nice... Uh, little comic by XKCD, the last one with the pie graph and the bar graph was as well. Um, as you can see in this little situation, uh, the male and a male and presumably a female, you know, just talking to each other, and, and the male says, "I think we should give it another shot." Uh, the girl says, uh, "We should break up, and I can prove it." And she shows a graph of their relationship, uh, and he goes, "Huh? Maybe you're right. I knew data would convince you." She goes. And lastly, he says, no, I, I just think I could do better than someone who doesn't label their axes. And if you go back to that second panel there, uh, look at that. What does the x axis represent? I don't know. What does the y axis represent? I don't know. She didn't label her, her axes up. What a, what a noob, right? Um, so, of course, you wouldn't use math in this situation, right? So when will we ever need this? No, I don't actually think you should use math to uh, break up with somebody. That's probably not going to go over well. Okay, so when will we ever need this? Uh, honest short answer, probably never if you don't ent enter a STEM field. Um, so as far as like a specific nitty gritty math topic goes, like if we are completing the square in Algebra 2 and you ask me when are we going need to need to use this, um, honest short answer, probably not if you don't enter a STEM field, so that's science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, but there is a better answer to come. So by the way, if you, if you do enter a STEM field, well, you shouldn't be an asking me the question when are we ever going to use this because well, it's literally in the title of the group, but whatever. Um, there's a better answer to come. That answer is robots. So eventually, over time, robots will develop the intelligence to take over uh, and dominate the world. So you didn't think about that one, did you, Billy, when you asked me when did we need to know how to factor? Because robots, my man. Okay, so obviously that's not right. Let's, let's go through the better answer. Uh, complex critical thinking is far superior to routine labor. So co complex critical thinking, it's this idea that um, you have a brain and you should be able to know how to use it. Um, thinking, innovating, creating, problem solving, those are all really important skills that are developed in a math classroom. Um, and that is far superior to routine labor that is just mundane, procedural, grind, it's the same old, same old. Um, you know, think of those jobs that are just not stimulating to you at all and just want to make you, you know, run away mid, mid, uh, in the middle of the day. Just like, man, I have not been using this brain I have here. Um, so we need people that can think. Gone are the days that we need people to just click buttons in a, in a very procedural order just based on what you were told. Uh, routine labor is dying. You want a job that will exist in the decades to come. So when we went over that slide with the robots taking over the world, I wasn't totally kidding there. Um, machines will kind of destroy a lot of those uh, routine labor jobs that are just kind of grindy and boring and don't require a lot of thought. The jobs that are going to exist are the jobs that require you to think. So the innovators. Um, those that are problem solving and creating new solutions. They're not using the solutions of the past. So part three, the last part of this three-part series, how will we even use this? As you can see here, there's another XKCD comic. Uh, it's uh, fields arranged by purity. So on the far left corner, we see the socio sociologists. I could never say that, so I hope that's right. Um, and uh, next to, to that person uh, is the psychologist who's just kind of scoffing. 
and he's just saying there, uh, sociology, that's the word I was looking for, is just applied psychology. And if you keep going, the biologist says that about the psychologist, and the chemist says that about the biologist, and the physicist says that about the chemist, and all the way to the most purest corner, we see the mathematician saying, oh, hey, guys, I didn't see you all the way over there. Uh, mathematics is the purest of them all. Uh, it is almost just foundational knowledge itself, um, kind of like um, the cousin of um, uh, philosophy, I guess, in, in some ways. Um, math is to um, prove fact beyond all reasonable doubt, which is just a fascinating notion if you think about it. Um, so how will we use something that is so pure and so abstract? Um, really, when will you use the quadratic formula? Um, so I like this little comic uh, here. I, I didn't make this one either. I don't know who did, though. It says, what makes you think you're qualified for this job? Oh, I don't know if my human me is covering this. Um, I might be covering this image now that I think about it. Um, so if I am, it's just a little image saying, uh, what makes you think you're qualified for this job? And he just recites the quadratic formula, which obviously isn't going to take him anywhere in the interview. Honestly, you don't have to memorize the quadratic formula. That's useless knowledge. So how will we ever actually feasibly use this? Well, pro tip, don't take math too literally. Um, so here's a nice little scenario that I love reading. Um, so as you can see here, we have a uh, biologist, a physicist, and a mathematician, and they all stand, stand outside a house. Um, they see two people enter the house, and after a while, they see three people leave. What? The biologist says, ah, yes, a fine case of reproduction if you ask me get it because they did human nature stuff. Uh, the physicist says um, that has to be an inaccurate measurement, like assuming that there was some sort of error at the beginning. And then lastly, the mathematician says, well, if one more person were to enter the house, the house would be empty again. What? So if you have two people enter the house and you're subtracting off three, you're at negative one. So if one more person goes in, you're at zero. Obviously, in this situation, if you take math literally, what the heck? That is useless. Uh, and a lot of these, like, I guess, sophisticated jokes, uh, the mathematician's always, like, the butt end of the joke because he's the one taking everything, or she's the one, you know, it doesn't matter the gender there, they're the one taking things so very literally uh, that it's not taking them anywhere. And that's kind of the problem with math. When you view it through that very literal lens, uh, you're not going to get anywhere with it. So instead of taking math so literally, adapt and versatilize. Um, so versatilization, totally made up word, um, is the idea of transferring mathematical tools and skills to different challenges in life. So when you're kind of crunching through the numbers in your math homework and you're problem solving, you're looking for key information, you're recalling um, kind of uh, solving methods and, and applying concepts that you learn in the math classroom to kind of solve, I guess, your math homework. Um, you know, those skills are applicable to different challenges in life. When you are presented with a problem in life, you're using those very problem-solving skills that were, uh, I guess, um, work, worked upon on in your math classroom. So rather than waiting for the day you're actually going to use math, uh, and thinking math is this mysterious foreign language, which it is not, uh, persevere. Um, because, I don't know if Albert Einstein actually said this, but it's a good quote regardless. It's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with the problems longer because these skills will be applicable. So perhaps not directly. If you take everything so literally and directly and, and you just be like, man, when am I ever gonna complete the square? Uh, you're not gonna. Uh, but the skills that you develop in here, you are going to use. You will problem solve and you will reason and you will use thought in your everyday life. Uh, that's all I have for you. Please continue to math on and I will do the same.